that's a how the hell do we manage without that tool? An absolute must and a lifesaver. So get your PPE. Hi, I'm Steve and this is Alex and we're Brit Lane with Steve and Alex and here are the 10 things we can't build without. So the first tool is obviously going to be our trials, which these are things we can't work without at all because as bricklayers we need our trials. The trial I have here is a London pattern with a leather handle. And I wasn't really accustomed to London patterns at first because I'm used to one called a Philadelphia, which the only difference is it's a bit wider at the bottom, whereas this is more of a diamond shape. My first trial I got was a gift from one of our customers mm -hmm. and the one I've got now was also a gift from uh, Rodian, from Rodian Builds. Obviously we use these every single time that we're brick laying. We use it to spread our water, butter the bricks, sometimes level the bricks down. Cut insulation. Cut insulation, yeah, because <laughs> uh, we're too cheap for a knife. Our universal tool and the uh, backbone of our work. Next we've got pointer. Not everyone knows about these because I certainly didn't for a long time. Basically a very very narrow trowel. I think this is an 8mm. What the top pointers use is for filling joints in nice and tight. When you've done your toothing in the top of the, the top of the bed is always empty and you can never get the mortar in properly so what you do is you get your mortar on your trowel and you push it in and this pushes it in tight because it fits into the bed and you just keep pushing in until it's really tight don't you. I was pretty stubborn. I wouldn't use these. Not, not I wouldn't use them couldn't be bothered using them, but I kept getting comments in our videos saying get yourself a tuck pointer, it's miles easier. So thanks for our viewers for recommending it, it's a, it's a fantastic tool. Next up we have Brick Hammer. This is another uh, essential for a bricklayer. Not only is it just a hammer, this part is specifically designed for cutting bricks. Obviously if you don't have access to like another if a big electric cutter or any big saws, and you just need a quick cut, you get your brick hammer out and you get your brick and you just smack it where you need to and then you got your cut then. Very nice for cutting halves and like three quarters kind of thing. Because of the way the head is as well, you can also trim down some bricks that you may need to. Just another one that needs to be in every bricklayer's toolkit. Nothing amazing about it, it's just an essential. Just an essential, yeah. This is Alex's, he has a CK one, which is very narrow. I actually have a slightly different one, which has the actual blade flares out, so it's more like a bolster, it's more like two and a half inches, three inches at the end. So it's very good for cutting blocks because it's pretty much a bolster and a hammer in one. As long as you're accurate with your actual blows, it's, I find it a much better hammer. I've had this one for seven years, so yeah. it does the job. When it comes to like hammers and some bricklayers tools, the more worn down it is, the better it actually is. Because trying to cut with a brand new one, it never goes as, uh, as you want you know, it to. The brand new ones that have actually tooled to a point. The guy I saved my time with when I was a teenager, he said, you're not trying to break the brick with the, with the point, it's just like a shock wave, so you're putting a shock wave through the brick and the brick will break there, so that could be rounded off to there and it still works just as well as long as you get the hammer blow in the right place. It's not about how sharp your brick hammer is, it's how you use it. Next up is a very important one for any tradesman, is uh, your PPE, which obviously health and safety first. Obviously we have ear defenders, protect against any noises. I've got tinnitus now, so these are no joke. Use your ear defenders. Don't don't risk your hearing, because uh, tinnitus isn't fun, believe me. A FFP3 dust mask to prevent from any of the dust that comes from cutting blocks or cutting bricks and whatever. As far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> I'm 54. Always clear my throat, because I think I probably damage the throat. As a lot of people never used to use all this kind of stuff, probably started using it a bit too late, but I don't do any cutting without these now. This bit in particular has um, removable filters, and as you can see, they're very dusty, so we do use them a lot. We don't cut without them. And these particular masks, they're very rigid, but once that mask is on your face, there's no restriction to your breathing whatsoever. And when you're wearing your specs, they don't fog them up either. That's true, nice yeah. Tight. seal on your nose, because you've got a double, double strap on it as well. Yeah. So you've got that strap, and then you've got the other strap that goes on your neck and eye protection to protect from any fragments of bricks coming off of breaking a uh, brick or a piece of block. No, no backstory needed for this, it's just important. These are brilliant because they come in a, in a little pouch. That makes them last twice as long because usually they're just slashed in the van and they're getting scratched up and everything. These are okay, but the things like grinding out, like I do a lot of repointing and grinding the joints out, there's a lot of dust. We use the full face goggles. You can get them to fit over your glasses. I've had a metal splinter in, my, in right in my pupil 
and I didn't know it was there till it rusted and started giving me jip. I've learned all my lessons the hard way. Wear your PPE. Don't don't make people make you wear it. Just just wear it. It just costs you what? Takes 20, a few minutes. Twenty quid to get get your basic PPE kit. So get your PPE. If anyone tells you that they can just run it freehand, nine times out of ten, don't listen to them. <laughs> a string line is essential. You set it up corner to corner. Like either stick it in your bricks and wet joints or you put some corner blocks on the end. Line's nice and tight and you run your bricks to that. More trades than just bricklayers use their string lines because it's the quickest and easiest way to make sure that your work is level or to how you want it. Again, nothing special, but it's just one of them essentials that... Basic but essential. Yeah. And you've got um, the pins, which are stainless steel, I think, and very sharp. So you can nail them into existing mortar and you can also push them into the wet mortar. And you can also use them with corner blocks and you can use them with other stuff, can't you? Yeah. Next up is a really handy tool which was gifted to us by one called Richard from Brickwork Tools. These are called the Fitz Bricks. Invented by a bricklayer. Yeah, invented by a bricklayer. So like if your brickwork's too wet or something or you're just doing like a course at a time or just to save time. You've got these teeth that grip the brick. You've got these little tiny pins which don't look much they actually but they, they stop it twisting and grip the brick. What you're aiming for is this, this groove here, the top groove. That's where the line goes. The line goes through the grooves. Onto the brick, around the line holder. Obviously, same at the other end. That's it, all set up. It looks a bit fiddly, but once you've done it a couple of times, it's second nature, isn't it? Yeah. With these newer models, they can be done on 215s as well. Both sides as well. Both sides can be used. The originals just worked on the 100mm, and then these ones were developed to work on the full width, the 215, but you can adjust them down. So they're the same clamp, but just you have a little a little screw there to adjust. These were an absolute godsend of a tool, so. Marvelous invention. Absolutely. This one is another one that we never realized we needed until we got it. This is a reciprocating saw. This is a blue professional duty one because we're using it for heavy duty stuff. Why this is so useful to us is because a lot of jobs we do require us to take bricks out or like rake out cross joints. It's an actual Bosch blade, that's hence the blue. Bosch Expert Carbide Tipped Masonry. It's got the little carbide teeth on it, which just tear through lime mortar, don't they? Yeah. There are, it struggles a bit on sand and cement, like hard sand and cement, but we do a lot of the jobs we do, it's, it's lime mortar that's because they're about 50 years old. So this stuff just cuts straight through. So if we're taking a lintel out, we can cut right across the top and then the, the bricks just fall out. It's pretty much dust free. The dust comes that far and just falls out, doesn't it? Whereas if you use a grinder, it just sends dust everywhere or you, you use the um, water suppression, just end up covered in slime, Fudge. don't you? But this is excellent. Very low dust and it's very accurate cut and very fast as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because a lot of people ask us in our comments, what blade's that, what blade's that, and that's it. And it's 20 quid and it lasts. It, it, the, the teeth last a long time, don't they? Yeah. They tend to wear at the top, I'm sure you're not supposed to do it, but I just cut the top off as the teeth were, so this blade gets shorter, but you get to use all the teeth. That's a how the hell do we manage without that tool. We actually picked it up because we were doing a job, which was going to take forever with like the grinder. Yeah. And you just thought you'd bite the bullet, and the day, like I think the day of the job, you actually just picked it up. Yeah. Obviously, we just saved about half a day's worth of time just cutting them. It's powerful because of this, but, um, Funny story, well it wasn't funny for me, Alex dropped a brick on this right in the middle and cut it right in half. It cost us 50 quid for a new cable. The damn saw only cost 100 pounds. Funny enough, this is a tool that we've actually used a lot but never actually owned. What persuaded us to get it was, after working down here with A&E, using that lace level almost every day, we thought we just need to bite the bullet and buy one. Alex just uses it like a tool out of the bag, he uses it all the time. Yeah, so. So it makes things so much easier. Yeah, it's a self-leveling laser, so you just put it wherever you want it, wherever you need it to be, and then just simply switch it on, and it'll do the job for it. So now that's spinning a level laser line. You have a receiver, which you attach onto a staff or something of plumb level, and what that does is then, is it will read the laser line. So when you get a flat line noise, that is bang on level. So if you need to find a floor level in a house and you transfer it onto your extension, then you, you set it up on your floor level till it beeps straight line. And then you take it to wherever you're working 
you, you adjust up and down until you get the straight line again and then put your mark or measure then you know it's level from your, your existing to your, to your new so it's really handy it's, it's it's hard to explain just how versatile it is easy to use hard to explain yeah it's a much quicker and easier way of transferring your levels from one place to another and it's a good way of double checking your work so like when we've done a foundation for example we put it on each corner to make sure we're at the level point and if if there's anything wrong with the concrete or something we'll know if it's like 10 mil out 20 mil out so we can adjust then to the level we've Maybe. just done an extension yeah and we check the house and the extension was 3.4 eight and a half meters 3.4 and when we checked from side to side on the extension the actual house was at a level by 30 mil so if we'd have followed the house our extension would have been 30 mil out the floor would have been 30 mil out so this helped us check and such a long even with the straight edge in the level checking your levels it would have been a lot longer and not as accurate oh yeah we use it that much instead of just like borrowing them and hiring them and we just own one this was 520 quid so it's not cheap this is like an entry level one it's not cheap but it's definitely worth the money it's definitely worth investing in the laser level isn't it an absolute must and a lifesaver mm. next up is one a little bit different this one isn't in everybody's but it's an essential for us now which is our gopro camera so when I started my career in bricklaying, I had to do video evidence for my assessor. Dad would have to film me on his phone doing work if like he couldn't show up and what have you. From that kind of stemmed the YouTube side of things because we'd seen people doing work on YouTube before and we've got started getting comfortable trying to film ourselves working so we just thought we'd give it a go. Obviously this has become very essential, we just take it with us everywhere to work. Even if we're not filming we'll take it with us just in case. You can get the fancy cameras and obviously they're a lot more fragile and you have to take a lot more looking after. This is at 300 quid this so as far as cameras go it's pretty cheap. It films in 4k, it's on this clamp and it's just we just clamp it to wherever and we do a lot of time lapsing so we can just set it up, set it up in the corner, work away, get a bit of time lapse in and then do, do a little piece of camera, talk to, talk to the camera. It does get abused a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> a it bit. just gets chucked about. It's been thrown in trenches, hasn't it? It's been, it's had a ton of soil tipped on it for the action shots. Dropped in a bush. Yeah, thrown in the pool by my granddaughter. <laughs> that's, that's knackered up the back screen. Yeah. It's supposed to be waterproof, but it isn't. This is an add-on for the GoPro, which we very recently got, and it's been a massive help. These are DJI microphones. They're just very simple little clip-on mics. You just clip them on like that. And then this part here is the receiver. You just clip it on. There's a cable that attaches in, and then you set up. So it's idiot-proof, which is good for us. Because the GoPro doesn't have the best quality mics to begin with. Useless. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And also, my voice doesn't come across well on microphones and I tend to mumble a bit. Our most common negative comment is, I mumble and people can't hear what I'm saying. So, after a lot of stick, we finally took the plunge, didn't we? We had a look around, we considered like other microphones, but these ones, like I said before, they're just idiot proof. So yeah. they, they also, you've got the, um, the clip, they also have a tiny little magnet on the back, so you don't need a, a lapel, you just put them anywhere you want with the magnet. This housing that you live in charges them as well so you get I think five hours charge and then once they're done you've got another two charges in the box. Easy to use and it just makes the audio so much easier for our videos which as like as dad said has been a struggling issue for a while so these have become part of the GoPro backpack kit another essential for us. They're a lot cleaner when you buy them. <laughs> they, don't, they don't stay clean. And that was the 10 things that we can't build without. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to reach me and dad, you can find us on Bricklaying with Steve and Alex on YouTube or on our Instagram at Steve and Alex Bricklaying. Let us know who you want to see next. A massive thank you to Build With Amy for having us here today and we'll see you later. And this is the 10 tools. London, Philadelphia pattern, narrow. London, Philadelphia pattern. Sorry, London, <laughs> narrow, Philadelphia pattern. London Narrow leather handle. So when am I starting again? Start again, just start again.